What is up, everybody? Welcome to Apocalypse Now, the movie hangout show from us, Apocalypse Movies. We apologize for the unorthodox start and late start. No worries there. We got myself, Jacob Bartley, and Gio Ramos in the house. We got a few other guys who are going to join us pretty soon here. And yes, no worries there. We're, we're all good. We're ready to go. We're ready to talk some cool stuff here. How are you doing, Gio? Oh, I'm pretty good, man. I had a very chill, relaxed weekend, watched a bunch of movies, and uh, yeah, that's the awesome. highlight of my weekend. <laughs> Dude, I worked all weekend. I haven't had a day off in eight days, so wow. I am waiting for the weekend. Cannot wait. But yes, it is Tuesday news day, and I guess you could say booze day as well as I'm having a nice angry orchard in the hot California weather. But yes, we're going to get to a few things here. Uh, so we usually do the movie watching challenge segment at the beginning of the show, but we will go ahead and wait for the other guys to join us here. Jake Berlin uh, has a part in that because he was challenged and he uh, has the person that is going to be challenged next. So Gio, we will go um, to the ratchet trailer here in a second, but do you want to go ahead and tell them about our podcasts before we get to that? Yeah, let's do a quick plug. So you guys can not only find Apocalypse Movies on YouTube, but we have podcasts available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. You know, you don't always have the opportunity to watch our videos, but you can listen to us. And when uh, doing so, we also hope that you guys uh, subscribe, comment, and rate us as well. Um, your support really does give us uh, more exposure and, um, you know, more people can watch us and, you know, that will hopefully lead to more conversations and uh, a bigger uh, community here for Apocalypse Movies. So if you do find us on one of the platforms, please do give us a like and comment. Um, and we really do appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. And I'll just say I use Google Podcasts and I love it because I don't have to search for YouTube videos. I just go straight to Google Google Podcasts, find who I'm looking for, press play, and it's good to go. I don't got it. It doesn't use a lot of data, so I highly recommend doing it uh, on yeah, whatever platform okay. you want. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, Gio, you know me, man. You, What is one of my favorite movies of all time? I, oh, I know that's very random, but if you know what the next subject is, then hopefully you can guess. Absolutely. And you introduced me to this movie. You gave me the DVD, and I watched it. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, um, a classic. Yes. Uh, the classic of classics. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I I always talk about this movie. I challenged Jake to it a while ago. He recognizes the masterpiece. We had a big poster of it in our background for the longest time. Actually, my poster that I need to get back from Brian. Ship it to me, Brian, even though you don't live that too far away. Uh, so anyways, Nurse Ratchet is one of the most suffocating, terrifying characters Evil. in all of cinema history because she's not a villain who's going to take over the world. She's not a villain who's going to just shoot somebody or, or murder somebody just blatantly out of nowhere for no reason. She's going to manipulate these inmates, uh, these people who are committed to these psych wards and just play this game with them. And just, she loves being in control and she's just, She's so good at it. She's so intelligent. And so Nurse Ratchet, if you've seen the original film, she is just an amazing character, but uh, an awful character as well. So we heard about this series a long time, several years ago, that Sarah Paulson was going to be playing Nurse Ratchet from the creators of American Horror Story, which she starred in several seasons of. And the first trailer for Ratchet just dropped. There was a uh, image a few days ago, but now we have the first trailer. And I don't know if you got a chance to check this out, Gio, but I look. Uh, there's one thing I don't like about the trailer, and I'll get to that in a second. But the it, the visuals and Sarah Paulson's portrayal and everything going on looks incredible to me. It looks like they took this small little world that is that was first created in the Ken Casey novel and then brought to screen in the Jack Nicholson film, one of his best performances ever, which he won an yeah. Oscar for. Mm -hmm. um, and they took this world and kind of expanded into it. And we usually see this from uh, science fiction stuff or mythology stuff. This is just a, 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 a realistic world. And they've kind of, they're doing a prequel series for it. 
Mm -hmm. And Sarah Paulson looks amazing. It looks like a uh, very creepy. There's this horror element to it. I don't know if I love the music that they chose to play in the first half of the trailer. And I get it because it's, it's music kind of from the era that it takes place in and they kind yeah. of remixed it and updated it. I get what they were going for, but I don't think the music necessarily fit, but overall this looks very, very creepy to me and I'm, I'm down for this. Yeah. You talked about nurse Ratchet and how she's a type of villain that's never really going to take over the world or whatnot. But when you're in her world, Oh my God, she, she, she controls you. She, We'll get into, well obviously she's a, a nurse at, at a mental institution so she will get into your your head we saw that with uh nicholson's character in the movie oh yeah this trailer was fantastic the first 30 seconds the first time you hear sarah paulson as nurse ratchet speak you're just like yes absolutely when she's like you know, I, I never said I was offended. I, or, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I think the <laughs> question was personal. I was like, dude, she's Dang. scary. <laughs> yep, you better be on your p's and q's when you're around her. But I, Sarah Paulson um, is just fantastic. You know, going back to another FX show that she was on, uh, OJ Simpson. Um, the oh yeah, I never saw that. Simpson. Yeah. yeah, she was fantastic um, as the prosecutor. Um, and also uh, Glass as well. She, she, I thought she was uh, excellent in Glass, um, the third part of the M. Night uh, Shyamalan trilogy uh, split. But yeah, Jacob, th this I thought this was perfect for FX. You know, like, yeah, you definitely get that American Horror Story vibe. I think it's the producers of American Horror Story also, also uh, attached to this one. Uh, the visual look of it, the tone, um, the environment, and again, the, the even the costumes, you know, everything. It's just it, it, when you envision a Nurse Ratched uh, origin, which a character like her very much deserved, this is what you would imagine. I mean, in FX, they just make some of the best content. Let me just say that. They make some of the – I mean, Dave. Uh, uh, granted, that's I, FXX. But yeah, you know, I like that show. Yeah. And uh, this – judging by this trailer um, – it looks like it's going to get very, very uh, R-rated, which it should be. Um, it's going to be very Joker-esque in the sense that, uh, you know, the mental health and it's going to have some social commentary in there. And it's it's going to be very uncomfortable to watch, but so entertaining. I can't wait. I can't wait for this. Yeah, and a lot of times we – they talk about prequel movies for characters in our comic book movies, in our Star Wars movies, things like that. And – we don't necessarily need to see like a young Yoda movie, right? But this is the type of characters they should be doing prequels on. These characters who are in these iconic movies that mm. people are familiar with, but they're not necessarily franchise players. Can't hear you, Jake. Whoa. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking. I'm talking now. Okay, okay. hello go. everybody. Whoa. Yes, we Jesus. were just talking about the Nurse Ratched trailer. Guys, welcome. Oh, by man. the way, you mean the trailer I told you about? Get out of here! Oh my, yeah. Brian's the only one in the world that knew about it, and yeah. he texted me about it. Mind you, uh, I have not seen it. Oh, uh, hey, uh, hey, one. I, I, I'll step in here real quick. I want to apologize for our tardiness here. Um, we, this never really happens. Everything is usually <laughs> goes on time. Um, for those of you that know what the Schmodown is, uh, we were just on a show for the Schmodown. And none other than John Roca popped in at 725 as we were ending the show uh, to talk about something that had happened with him. So I apologize for the tardiness and everything like that. Jacob Geo, I'm sorry for that. Oh, no worries. We're here man. now. So. Uh, the only thing I missed was the music in the beginning. I, I, know, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, when I first started, I was just sitting here. I thought the music... I thought it was going to automatically start playing, and I, that's what I was waiting for. But no worries. I mean, we're hey, we can, we can always do the intro right now and restart I'm the show if you wanted I'm to. I'm sure our viewers <laughs> were viewers will forgive us. But Gio yeah, and I yeah. basically already gave our thoughts on the Nurse Ratchet trailer. Uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts if you've seen it. Brian, go ahead. Uh, I watched it, uh, and it's funny because I'm coming from a different Keith! Uh, perspective. Hey. Hi, um, it's funny because I'm coming from a different perspective because I have not seen uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But, um, I mean, I, every single person that was in it, I'm totally down to watch this show. Uh, I now really badly want to watch 
uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest so I could watch this show. Um, and anything Ryan Murphy to me does is fantastic. So if he's taking on something like this, I can only imagine how good it is. And the amount of people I saw in the trailer, actor-wise. So I, I'm I'm stoked for something I know nothing about. I, and you know what? That's awesome. I love that you can watch this trailer and be excited and not have seen the movie. Like, that's just great. I have no idea what's going on. No clue. In the slightest. Who who Nurse Ratch, Ratchet Ratch is? Yeah. I don't even know her name. So Nurse Ratchet, I don't I don't know. That that <laughs> word means a totally different thing these days, but but yeah. yeah. Um no, wasn't it terrifying at the end of the trailer when you see her doing the the pick the like the, the pick thing into their brain? It's just it's crazy. Yeah, so very do. true. Because the actress I know the actress who played her, I know she was nominated for best actress. I don't know if she won though. She might have won. But she was amazing. So she, won. she won. Yeah. So her and Jack won. And it's it's one of those roles. It's like you don't want to see somebody else play it. But Sarah Paulson kind of like looks like her in a way, like an updated modern version of her. Keith, did you get a chance to check out that trailer? Uh, I started it. I started, you know, how it kind of auto plays a little bit um, uh, when I was scrolling. Oh, through yeah, Twitter yeah. So I only watched like the first minute of it. And I didn't. I didn't okay. Don't talk about cuckoo's nest because we have to talk about that later but yes we do <laughs> but the trailer Don't spoil it, it for me because i what do you think about the what do you think about the look of the of this ratchet show like just what you from what you've seen keith uh it looks it definitely does look interesting i love sarah paulson so uh, great person to get to play this role uh Oh man, see, you don't want to talk about the movie, so yeah, we'll talk about it <laughs> later. We'll, we'll talk. I about have it an later. interesting, wow. I, I have an interesting opinion about Nurse Ratchet that I don't, I don't think is, is different from from everybody else. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, I'm curious to watch this show uh, and see her take on it. Uh, it looks like it's set well, but it's, it's obviously set well before the events of uh, the movie, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah it's, years, it's set, like years and years and years and yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's set well before the movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake, what do you think of it? So, yeah. uh, I I liked it. I I thought it was I thought it was. You great. watched and, the TV trailer, and I was just I was just gonna say that I don't wow. rare, I don't ever watch. I don't know what it is for the last year or so. I have decided on not watching television trailers to show that I want to watch. Um, and it's just I guess it's just a preference. Uh, I've I've kind of cut back on watching trailers in general unless they're the big ones. And at that point, I even just watch the first ones and then I kind of just leave it alone. Um, but specifically with TV, and you guys know how much I adore TV. Um, I don't know. It's it, anything Sarah Paulson is. I'm hooked on it. Really, that's what it comes down to. Anything she does, I'm instantly hooked on. Um, it could be her sitting at a coffee shop drinking coffee for two hours and I would instantly be hooked watching her. She's just that type of actress for me. Um, but her taking on the character of, Ra of nurse ratchet is really, really intriguing. And it being on Netflix from the guy who does American horror story is also very intriguing. Um, and so I'm excited about it. I really, really am. And I just watched cuckoo's nest last year. You challenged it to me, Jacob. Yep. Um, and so I'm very fresh on it. And uh, so I, I'm very much looking forward to it and seeing what it's all about. Uh, and I, I have no doubt that it's going to be really, really good. Awesome. Okay, so we kind of jumped around a little bit just because we couldn't do watching challenge without you guys here. So I will say, Rachel, uh, I was I was gonna do one yes. with with someone until uh, until Brian messaged the group and was like, "Did you see that trailer?" <laughs> so you know what's so funny true. is I was gonna save it to do a trailer reaction. So was I. So I could do a trailer reaction. Well, then and you should have well, no, stop it. Not Brian. It wasn't you saying that. Like then I saw it was on the notes. I was like, "All right, I gotta watch it now." So it's fine. I put it's I fine. put it on the notes once Brian said something in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so it's all good. I yeah. To no be honest, there. I'm still I still haven't watched that final trailer for Kingsman because I keep thinking we're gonna do I, it. <laughs> Brian, I haven't I haven't watched I've only ever watched the teaser trailer for Kingsman. Well, you're gonna get new trailers when the movie 
like yes. comes out in two yes. years. So um, <laughs> let's, uh, all right, let's rewind back to the movie watching challenge. <laughs> so Jake was challenged to watch Bedazzled. Hey one of, guys, th this is just a wild show. This is just, I can just yes. feel it. It's a wild show, man. It is. Jake was challenged to watch Bedazzled, <laughs> uh, a wild movie fitting for this show. <laughs> um, and I challenged him to it and I was so happy he got to watch it. Keith loves this movie. Brian loves this movie. Gio, have you seen Bedazzled? Uh, uh oh, we're gonna have to hang out and watch that. But uh, yes, so Jake was challenged to watch it. So we're gonna play. Do you have the clip ready still, Jake? Do I we, do. Do we have that? Yes. Okay. So Jake's gonna play a clip from <laughs> his. We we did a review earlier just, this. <laughs> just because I'm late doesn't mean I'm not prepared. <laughs> we, what? we did a we did a review of it earlier this week. Uh, Jake and I sat down and talked about it. So we're gonna show you a little bit of that here. Yes, you are correct. It is one thousand percent silly. <laughs> but I understand why you guys enjoy it. Um, it. It is quirky. It fits that 2000s timeline. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a movie of its time for sure. Uh, but there's something about it that is very appealing. Um, it has this little charm to it. Uh, and I think that really boils down to the chemistry that Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley have together, which is shockingly good. Oh, yeah. Um, so you liked it? Yeah. I'm, and you're gonna have to go watch the video. <laughs> yeah, so you can check out that full video if you go to our YouTube channel. Um, you can watch that full video. But, but yeah, I think it's just a movie that you know it's not like a great movie, but it's a very uh, enjoyable movie. I'd How about say. Elizabeth Hurley? <laughs> Geo, you can watch it just on that alone. It's getting it fantastic. done. <laughs> Look at Keith. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Brendan Fraser is amazing <laughs> in this movie too. He's hilarious in this movie. He's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, he kind of annoys me at times, but he's sometimes, hilarious yeah. in this. When he's the basketball player, oh my goodness. Oh no. You guys gotta check out Bedazzled if you yeah. have not yet. If you have not yet. All right. Yeah. Now oh, who's who's taking off to space? What is going on? <laughs> hey, you said it's a wild show. So it is a it is definitely um, a wild show. All right, now let's fast forward to news. Patty Sorry. Jenkins. <laughs> so Patty Jenkins uh, had some comments regarding her um, the Wonder Woman franchise and her role in it. So we'll talk about this really briefly. So she basically said the next one is probably my last Wonder Woman movie, and this is she's talking about the third one. She's not talking about 1984. And uh, so this is I don't think this is shocking, honestly. We didn't even know for sure that she was directing the third one. I don't think we assumed. But we didn't know for sure, and I'm okay with this because I don't. You don't want one director on one franchise for too long. They get, they get uh, burnt out in that world per se, and they they need uh, fresh things to work on. Jacob, I'll, I'll stop you real quick. We forgot to let Keith uh, announce mm -hmm. the movies that he's going to get. Picked. Oh, you're right. You're right. I was right. wondering. So, I was like, yeah, uh, this is yeah. It's it's all over the place. It's, it's yeah, a wild. Hey, it's a wild show. But yes, we'll get so that's a preview for our for our uh, topic there. But yes, so let's as the movie watching challenge goes, someone new is challenged. Jake challenged Keith, so, and we have a new format of how this is going to be done. Jake, do you want to tell them about it? Yeah, so we we talked about this very briefly uh, over the last couple of days, and we thought it would be a really fun idea because this has been happening with our watch alongs that you viewers. Uh, whether you're on YouTube or whatever it may be, have been uh, voting on what we should watch for our watch-alongs. And we thought, you know what, why not make it fun and interesting and have you guys vote on the movies we should watch for the movie watching challenge as well. Um, and so going forward for the time being, uh, the movies that are being challenged currently for us, which are, there's four of them challenge or four of them picked at one time for the one person being challenged. Uh, we are going to be debut them here on the channel on the show and then there's going to be a poll on youtube that you can vote on that poll is currently up but before you go to that poll let's go ahead and announce the movies that are being challenged i challenged keith i wanted keith to watch a movie this week and so each of us has picked a movie for him to watch and brian is going to be announcing those movies but he will not be announcing who picked the movies that way that stays a little quiet all right finally get to do something hmm. uh so keith your four movie choices are I Love You, Man, 
Shawshank, the Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. The Raid Redemption. <laughs> and finally... I've seen that. What? La La Land. I've seen that also. All right, well... Wow, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I thought hey. I'd put that on. I thought I'd... But I oh, marked a those. wild <laughs> show. Uh, we we expected it. I expected this to be a Friday show the way this is going, but it's a Tuesday show. Um, so just go ahead and vote. I will repost the poll, and we will put the two up. It'll be be, be between the Shawshank Redemption and I Love You, Man. Um, and so we'll see out of those two which one Keith gets to watch. I will not reveal any secrets, but the Shawshank Redemption has been asked of many of times. <laughs> So not that many times, <laughs> but we'll see. But damn you, Keith. Do we want right? to add two more movies th or no? You know what? Yeah, just, you just, just for the sake of, of how this show is going, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, let's just stick with the two. Um, and then we just need to promise that we need to make sure we update the list we have on Google. Uh, so we make sure that this doesn't happen going forward. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And yeah, he has not seen the Shawshank yeah. Redemption, which I just watched like two months yeah. ago. Oh my goodness. All right, cool. Yeah. So And that, now, that poll is currently up. That poll is up on YouTube. Go to our channel, go under community, and you will find that poll. Yes. So hopefully everybody heard what I was saying about Patty Jenkins. She basically said that the next Wonder Woman movie, meaning the third one, is gonna be her last. And honestly, I expected this. If, if I knew she was going to direct the third one, I figured it was going to be her last. Who knows how many Wonder Woman movies they're going to make with Gal Gadot. But if they're going to make more than three, I would I would assume that they're going to make that they're going to get a different director. Basically, because I think they need fresh eyes on it. Eventually, if you look at Sam Raimi with Spider-Man with, you know, Christopher Nolan with The Dark Knight, they just they didn't finish strong, in my opinion. So I think it. Who knows? Maybe, hopefully, Patty Jenkins will finish strong. But after that, I think she needs to move on. So I, I actually like this news, and I expected it. What do you think about it, Gio? First off, as the resident DC enthusiast, I'll say <laughs> that Heath Ledger's death played a big role in how Nolan um, approached the third movie. But, yes, it was definitely a, a downgrade from uh, yeah. The Dark Knight. Uh, I, I agree with everything you said, Jacob. It's it's not really news. I mean, you, you don't want to Michael Bay this franchise, you know, where you, he just did like six and it was just uh, terrible, you know, after the first one. Um, you know, Patty Jenkins really gave uh, DC, as much as I, I lo love the movies, uh, she gave DC a much needed win with Wonder Woman uh, during a time when, you know, uh, critics were... Uh, bashing the universe and fans alike uh not all of them but a lot of them but yeah i mean it's uh, i think she uh definitely has you know earned now the trust of a lot of hollywood studios and moving on to other projects you know she's proven oscar caliber and now she's proven uh, blockbuster you know so i it, it would suck but uh i'm excited to see somebody else come in and and uh, do another one one movie. So, yeah, agreed. Uh, what about you, Keith? What do you do? You see? Do you think this is a big deal or no? Nah, Geo just hit it on the head. You know, I don't know what to, I know what you mean <laughs> with the Michael Bay thing, but boy, whoa, whoa, that's Keith. Those are those are. Like, I think if she were to do more, I don't think it would be that same situation. I think, like, like it would still be good, right? Whereas Michael Bay's got worse and worse over time. I don't think that would happen with Patty Jenkins. But I know what you mean. I know, I know what you're saying. Well, I, 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 I would say that to happen. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. I, I don't think it would. I don't think it would. But definitely you do want to get a different, um, different uh, style, different voice, um, you know, a different approach. To the character uh i would actually compare it to like brian singer right like brian singer doing all the x-men movies they did you know i think it's as we all we love days of future past but i would really have loved to have seen matthew vaughn take on that film uh or someone else whatever just uh and certainly the last two that he did uh 
Apocalypse and the last one. Uh, he didn't do that one. Yeah, that, so was, uh, that was uh, Simon. Oh, you're Kimber. right. It was uh, the writer. Uh, yeah, Kimber, but you're right. I, yeah, you're right. I just want to say Brian Singer should have directed Days of Future Past because it's almost a damn near masterpiece. But I, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, what, yeah. What's the what? last one called? Apocalypse. Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apocalypse was terrible. So look, he so directed, was Dark Phoenix. He directed was. three. Brian Singer directed three good to great X Men movies. There you go. There's your proof. Yes, but he stayed on for at least one too long. And like I said, as good yeah, as Days exactly. was, but as good as good as Days of Past was, um, I think Matthew Vaughn. Would have I would would have liked to have seen a Matthew Vaughn version of that film like he was gonna. Problem is he can't um, stop making Kingsman movies and nobody asks for. Yeah, that's the see, and, and that leads. That's Kingsman. another one. There you go. See, that's another example right there. Matthew Vaughn kind of, and maybe this one will be good. I know it's kind of mixed with the last one, but um, I just want to see Wonder Woman two. I just saw that it's now it's October now. Um, like I said, I just just want to. I can't get too uh, excited or or. I'm not excited one way or the other because there just there aren't any movies and we don't know when there's going to be one. So uh, I want to get, get through the second one first before I start thinking about a third one. But yeah, I mean, you know, whoever they get on will be good. And like, like I said, as long as, they, as long as I got Gal Gadot, I'm good. I think she's great. I love her. I love she's my favorite character in this universe. Um, and I just, I just I love her. I think she's great. Man, this that, this this hold on. I'm Rachel's sorry, Jules. I gotta, I gotta cut in real quick. This is exactly what was going through my head. This is exactly <laughs> what was going through my head. Oh, wow. This is so brilliant. I cannot describe to you how brilliant this is. This is incredible. Yeah, this yeah. is like word for word what was going through my head right now. I That's so, awesome. I, I think Patty Jenkins is – I think she is – and and it's funny because she she did an incredible job with Wonder Woman, right? She crushed it. There, there is no doubt that she became an instant uh, star as a director with Wonder Woman. But she still, in a way, feels like she's very much underrated as a director. Um, I And we talk about this with a lot of directors. I want to see her do something different at some point. Whatever it may be. Whether it's another superhero or you know just another drama or whatever. So her yeah. doing the three is awesome. Like I think that's great. I've always said that if you're doing one specific character or story, I like the idea of it being one director rather than being split up in directors, a la the Star Wars sequel trilogy, we saw what happened there with the mess that happened with two and three, right? If she does the three of them, great, awesome. I have no doubt they're going to be great. I don't need her to do the Amazon series, the Amazonian series, excuse me. Um, she can executive produce. She can help with the story, but she doesn't need to direct. Yeah. There's plenty of other great, incredible TV directors out there that can take on that role for her and plant her vision for her. She doesn't need to do four Wonder Woman movies or five Wonder Woman movies. I want to see her do something else in the world of directing because she's that talented, right? I, I and you know if she decides to do more down the road, cool. But I think it's really good on her for this, for her to say, you know what? I'm gonna do my trilogy. I'm gonna tell my story of Diana, and then I'm gonna let someone else tell the story if they want to, or just let it be the three movies it is. So. Brian, any last thoughts, man? Yeah, I'm uh, going to stir up some ish right now. And I'm going to say the reason why she's only doing three is because she's going to take over uh, DC's movie slate and probably be <laughs> the Justice League person. It's, I, I mean, wants to do that, though. I don't think she does either, but I would be okay with that if she did. I, I would love that, but I don't think she wants to do that. Geo, it's a hot take. Although she does, she loves Superman. She did say she loved the Chris Reeves Superman films. Like those were a big influence on her. So I'd love to see her do a Superman. Wait a film. That'd be cool. Brian, say that again one more time. <laughs> Patty Jenkins is gonna do what? Patty Jenkins is essentially going to be the Russos of DC brother. and <laughs> take the reins of DC's team ups. Hmm. So now we're okay with filmmakers taking over universes. That's that's interesting. Well, no, just uh, being I, I, like I, the main I, directors in the I, franchise, I, that's what he means. 
she's certainly capable. I could see her being in, in like a Favreau role, you know, with the MCU and uh, how he was a uh, producer, consultant, you know, uh, whatnot. But uh, they should not give her the keys of the DCEU. Um, you don't trust her to take them? Not until I know. I mean, as much as I am an enthusiast of the universe, I want to see what they're doing at DC Fandom. It, it depends on how I think it'll go versus what will actually happen. So, I don't know. I think she would yeah. do a badass well, Justice League. I think you guys are talking about two different things. I think Geo's taking it as her becoming the Kevin Feige and Brian's saying her being the Russo brothers. That's a completely yeah. different thing. Brian, Brian's saying her being yeah. the main director, like maybe directing oh, oh. two Justice League films after her Wonder Woman film, something like that. It's still uh, it's Kevin Sujahara is still in charge of everything. So, didn't you leave? Or no, who's the other guy? Is it Kevin Sujahara or is it? No, it's uh, no, he, it's it's someone Walter else. Walter Hermada, he left. Walter yeah. Hermada, yeah. So it's Walter Hermada, yeah. That's who I meant. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I mean. I, I'd sign up to see a Patty Jenkins Justice League. Oh, yeah. After, I would too. after she dropped that amazingness that was Wonder Woman, I mean, there is still so much more they've got to do before they get to that. Um, I, I, I need another Superman movie. I need a, a few more things before I get to that. But if she's going to, I mean... If someone's going to say, hey, Patty Jenkins, you want to do Justice League? And she says, yes, I'm going to go. Bring it. Give it to me whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah, I would be down for that. Or at least have her do Wonder Woman 3. Anything else? <laughs> and then the next Justice League movie. I, I'd be all for that. All right, so let's move on to something that honestly is very shocking to me, but I get it. And that this is that Mulan the new live action Mulan movie from Disney is going to go to Disney plus for $29.99. Yeah. This is crazy. Jake, how do you feel about this, man? Yeah, this is uh this dropped today. Um, and it kind of cha changed our show around just a tad bit. Uh, we had to add this in here cause this is obviously a big deal. Um, this movie was supposed to come out in March this year and then they pushed it back to July. And then obviously it wasn't going to make that release date. And, it had been pushed to an indefinite release date to this point. And so they came out today and said, hey, September 4th, this movie is going to be available on Disney Plus for $29.99 for a purchase. Um, I'm very torn on it uh, because if I had the choice to see movies, every movie I watch, no matter what it is, I would much prefer to see it in the theaters. I would. Uh, I would I would pay to go see a movie in a theater. That's just how I prefer to see my movies. Um but looking at it from a studio standpoint, they have to do what's best for them financially. They have to do what's best for them as far as releasing films. Um, and I know that we can point to the money aspect of it being a little bit of the play, obviously. But this movie kept getting pushed back. The pandemic is unfortunately, it just, it just continues to linger. We don't know a timetable for it. And for a movie of this size, you need to make sure you get your money back. You need to make sure you get your money back in some capacity. Now, we or know and, and, and break even at this point. Some money. Well, and I, I'll say this: with the announcement of Mulan, they also mentioned that Disney Plus is now up to sixty-four point four million subscribers. That's their number they're at right now. So they have a lot of people aka a lot of families that might pay the $30 to watch this movie because, and Keith can attest to this, trips to the movie theaters for families run well over 50 bucks, run well over $75. This is a steal of a deal for families who are at home who can buy a $2 bag of popcorn at the grocery store to sit down and watch a movie. So in reality, this is a great move by Disney. Because not only does it get fans on board to buy this movie, to watch this movie when it comes out, but they also get their money back. Because more than likely, you're going to get a lot of people who may not even get to the theater to watch this movie who are going to buy it at home who want to watch it from the comfort of their house. Now, as a film snob and as a theater snob, I don't want to see it on Disney+. Plus. I don't. I would rather see it in theaters. 
But I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen. And so unfortunately to me, my hands are tied. And so when September 4th comes around, I'll be sitting there paying 30 bucks to watch this movie because at that point, I don't know if I'll get the chance to see this movie in theaters. And that's just unfortunately the time we live in right now. And so I'm very much torn, but I appreciate what Disney is doing because there's a difference between paying the $30 to buy this movie and paying the $20 to rent it like you do on Amazon for some of the other movies. They're giving the people the option to own it for $30 right out of the gate rather than renting it for 48 hours and it being gone. Did they say that was one of my questions? Did they say you the word the word rent was nowhere to be found? The word rent was nowhere to be found. It kept saying purchase, 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 purchase. That makes sense because then it's on your Disney Plus account. If they stick to it being purchased, kudos to them. High, high kudos to them. That's like buying the Blu ray. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I look, I applaud Disney for doing this. I, I really do because honestly, I think it's a selfless move. I think it's a selfless move because I am telling you right now, they're going to lose money on this. They're not going to break even. The budget is $200 million. They already spent probably over $20 million on marketing. They're not going to make that back. If you look, I know it's different, but if you look at Trolls World Tour, it it made like $100 million on, on streaming. Not bad, but if Mulan needs to make like 250 million to break even it's it's probably not going to happen but i think this is great because they're doing they're i don't think they're thinking about that they're like let's just make as much money as we can let's put it out there for the public people need this right now and it's like i said i don't think they're thinking about making money on this they're just thinking about doing a good thing so i love that and i'm telling you right now i'm paying 30 dollars for this when it comes out i i definitely am so i don't know know. uh it's another thing for me to do my birthday weekend, so I'm fine. <laughs> no, uh, I'm hey, not. maybe, maybe, maybe we do a watch along to Milan. That would be that I would have, be awesome. I got it chapter two last year. This year, I've got Mulan on a year that I haven't even gotten to really hey, see movies. That way, we help people. We help Disney out. Maybe if we do a watch along, people will buy it to watch along with us. Uh, I, I think I think this number is easy with this movie. I really think this this number is easy with this movie. Uh, you know, I I mean, thirty dollars sure. is a. I mean, granted, yeah, it's probably more more butts in the seats would make more money, but thirty is still a decent chunk per purchase. So there's confirmation by Rachel here too. She looked it up. Continuous access as long as you are subscribed. To yeah, that makes, makes sense. sense. Which that makes, makes sense. sense. So you so if you have Disney Plus, mm-hmm. you're buying the movie. That's what that's what you're doing. That makes sense. That yeah. All right. That's actually a pretty genius move, yeah. because because that kind of keeps you. It, say this is like your favorite movie of all time, all of a sudden, and you're not a hard copy person. You've now then kind of just subscribed lifelong to Disney Plus as long as you really really want to watch that Mulan movie. Yeah, for sure. Geo, what do you think about this man? Is this a good move or not? It depends on uh, how you look at it. If you're a consumer, it's a good move because you get a big blockbuster um, a lot sooner than you would have imagined. Um, I know for me personally, I don't think uh, I don't think Tenet or uh, the New Mutants are going to make those release dates. Uh, I think uh, once schools reopen, you're going to see the cases go back up for the schools that are stubborn enough to don't say that. Continue. No, I'm, I'm just being a realist here. No, I, I know. Now, if you're a movie theater owner, you're probably uh, punching air right now because uh, this was going to be <laughs> yeah. one, of the, one of the big ones that we're going to br- bring in a lot of families. Um, if you think about it, you know, they're not getting a cut of the twenty nine ninety nine. Normally, if this was this were in theaters, they get a cut of the ticket prices. I think after a certain number of weeks, but I think about all that revenue as far as concessions go, like that that's that's gone. Granted, in in September theaters weren't going to be open, but if Mulan decided, if Disney decided to wait and release Mulan later on down the road, then there's that opportunity to make back some of the revenue, but that's gone. 
on top of AMC signing that deal with Universal about their 17-day uh, embargo for movies and uh, other movies like Trolls, like this is it's not good for movie theaters. Uh, it's 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 kind of scary actually. I'm not saying movie theaters are gonna die, but uh, it's. Uh, if this trend continues, like I, I know Tenet won't do it because Christopher Nolan will not allow it. But like, imagine if uh, this pandemic continues into January, February. Like, what about those movies toward you know the winter time? The, uh, Eternal, the Eternals is in is in early February. What could happen to that movie? Oh, right? yeah. no time to die. Like, God, there's so many big movies. So many. these studios, um, I. I Listen to uh, another uh, movie podcaster, John Campion. He says these studios, the longer they wait, the higher the interest rates go up on their loans. And so I know it's a very yeah. numbers thing to look at, but it, it makes sense why Disney would release, you know, Mulan around this time. So I don't know. It, for us, it's good. Um, there will be those people who will share Disney Plus accounts and hey, you can watch it. Don't spend twenty nine ninety nine. There will be torrenters out there, um, you know, who you pirate the movie. Unfortunately, so this will be an interesting experiment. But uh, Disney is very brave for doing this, and I hope it works out very well. It could shift how blockbusters are now released uh, in the future. I, I think once we're out of this pandemic. Nothing will be this. Nothing will be the same. Nothing will, will be the same regarding movie theaters. So. Keith, are you and the kids getting together when this comes out and ordering it and getting some snacks and popcorn and watching it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait for Mulan, man. So I, I'm very excited about it. Um, but you, you mentioned, uh, oh, and by the way, before I get to that, Disney, like they're not, they can do this because I mean, they're Disney, they've got more money than God. everyone. So like, they're <laughs> fine. <laughs> like, like, so whatever money they'll make from this, make back from this, from, you know, that, like that's, that's the whole point, right? It's just to make some money back. They're not going to, like you said, Jacob, they're not going to make anywhere near, uh, uh, what they the cost of their production uh you mentioned maybe they spent probably 20 million on marketing way way more than that way more than that the oh general, i was general just, rule i was lowballing it yeah 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 it's generally it's like you take their production budget and then double it for marketing right that's what they say um it's you know that's not everything obviously but um a movie like this was probably was marketed heavily heavily um what was going to be at least until you know they started pushing it back but uh and then deal like yeah you mentioned like what campia said about the investors that's absolutely right you know a lot of people like they get the studios get funding from investors banks private investors even and uh you know who knows they're always so like so uh, uh secretive about how all that works so we don't know if or when these investors get their money back at all or how or what, who knows you know the numbers are always uh, a yeah. mystery but um, they'll get some something back right somebody disney itself and like i said they're fine they, they can do this sort of thing uh and i won't hurt them but you know like you said the theaters though well that sucks because all their like their, like all their money is concessions honestly that's you know yeah. even the little bit they get from box office is, is not even enough to like it like it's all it's always like concessions and uh, maybe some places parking if they have like garages or uh like we have downtown or or well that probably goes to the city but uh you know what i mean but uh yeah that's the thing to kind of be concerned about but you know uh that said i'll be clicking purchase and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh please support this movie guys it. when it comes out like please do so and jake yeah. made a good point about subscribers there's going to be people who don't have disney plus who are going to subscribe just to watch this movie and if you count the all those subscribers who are potentially going to keep their accounts after that maybe eventually they do make enough money to make it worth it so so that's a great point as well and and also well what what's the date on that again i'm sorry september, september 4th, 4th. 
I think in another what month, month and a half, we're gonna be getting uh, Mandalorian season two. You October. Know? So, I mean, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, so, right. so probably a lot of people jumping on, jumping on Disney Plus just for that as well. So, yeah, and not to mention, who knows when they stop, uh, start dropping their Marvel stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll make it all up in volume <laughs> for all of the uh, all that stuff. So. We we will see for sure. Um, awesome. So, uh, Gio, can you tell them real quick about our merchandise that they can purchase and where they can get that? Absolutely. You guys want to go to the T Public? That's T E E Public dot com, and you can find a pocket flicks apparel. After disabling that ad, we have tons of merchandise. So look at all those shirts from all of our channels. From moments on shows like whoa, whoa, whoa. In a good way. I What's still that, new one? that one. No, no, that's not a new one. We're not plugging that one today. Uh, <laughs> no. No, we'll just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, so we have a lot of merchandise. Uh, what is that? What is that? Is that for it's a, that is Dennis, Jacob if he wants football. to plug his little podcast. So oh. not related to movies at all, but I do a fantasy football podcast. I just started it with a couple of buddies of mine, and we're starting to discuss some of the preseason or not. There's no preseason, <laughs> but some of the stuff leading there's up to no the season. season. And uh, thankfully, Jake <laughs> Jake made us some cool merchandise, so you can get that there if you're into football. And go to First Round Fantasy on YouTube if you're interested in that. And also check out Apocalyx Movies Apparel as well. We got mugs, we got shaker cups, we got shirts, we have hoodies, we have sweatshirts. Winter is coming, guys. Not to the cool game of Thrones. <laughs> we got stickers, all that stuff. Check us out, tpublic.com. Again, that's T E E public.com. Search Apocalyx Movies and support us. And if you happen to purchase something, give us a shout out on social media. We will acknowledge your post. And your Very cool. I want to see it. You see what you put? Oh, what? nice. I I want to get some masks too. I've been thinking about ordering some. That's as well. thank you, Rachel. Nice. For yeah, supporting and for wearing a mask. All right. So yeah, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> so for our last topic of today. We're going to talk a little bit about this Lord of the Rings series coming from Amazon. We have a, a little bit of, I guess you could say rumor, but from a pretty reliable source. So we know that this new Lord of the Rings series is set to take place during the Second Age. For those of so for those of you Tolkien fans who know a lot about this stuff. And, uh, and the movies take place in the back half of the Third Age, just to give us some perspective. So this is not confirmed by Amazon but through a website called theonering.net. And they're one of the most legitimate Lord of the Rings websites out there. They're not official from Warner Brothers or anything like that or Tolkien, but they are like one of the most official ones. So apparently they're saying that Elrond, Galadriel, and Sauron are going to appear in the series. No word on officially if those actors, Hugo Weaving, Kate Blanchett, will return to play those roles probably going to recast young actors and they already uh, they already reca recasted galadriel oh, okay so they're they, all they're all going to be younger yeah so uh morfid clark is apparently a cast as Gl galadriel and i think that makes sense because it's even though they're the same characters and they don't technically age that much they're still supposed to be younger so who knows yeah. but uh keith man what do you think about this is this cool that they're having these characters Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was, okay, hold on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. I made this topic for this show specifically because Keith was going to be on tonight. And that's the response I get. That's the response I get. Oh, yeah, you you get make show. sure that Keith was going to be on. Are yeah. you kidding me? I can't wait for the show. Um, I just kind of would rather see. I want to see some different stuff. I mean, the, the elves are going to be a big part of that because you know they were, they kind of went. Uh, uh, well, Hugo Weaving as uh, King uh, Elrond was uh, very, very disappointed, and I'm I'm about to get super, super nerdy. So this, but he's so disappointed in in man. <laughs> he's disappointed in men. The man, what happened with the ring? How the the king? Uh, oh man, I'm blanking on his name. I'm so disappointed in myself, but didn't destroy the ring. Uh, and so the elves kind of sort of like how uh, 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 in Star Wars, uh, who went to uh, kind of like 
Uh, never mind. That's not a bad. That's a bad comparison. Just Scratch ask Rachel. Cool. <laughs> she knows it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, see, and she made a good comment uh, right there, but that kind of, I think, it kind of. Yeah, so we would I'll, see that. I'll, I'll step in just to kind of give a little bit of. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll step in just to give a little bit of a backstory. There's some notes on our on our our note yeah. drive um, about what it could possibly be about, and early rumors were hinting in the fact that it could be about a young Aragorn, but that is nowhere near the case because there is a consultant on the series who is like the most well known uh, person in the entire Tolkien era. And his name is Tom Shippey. And he is like the guy who's essentially telling Amazon, you can do this, this, and this, but you can't touch this, this, and this. So he gave them a time era on when they can tell the story. And it's in the second age. And so that means, like Rachel says here, so this is when the rings are forged, specifically the one ring. This is when this happens. Also, this is when the fall of man yes. happens. And so yes. th this is a big part in the, the Lord of the Rings history because this is kind of like the creation of the orcs. Like when this happens, there are no wizards or hobbits in this time era. They only popped up in Mordor in the what? third age. No they wizards. only so so Gandalf didn't appear in Mordor until the third age. Neither did Hobbits. Nobody discovered them until the third age. And so they're not gonna be in the series. So it's elves, orcs, man. And maybe one other uh, a type of species, and so it's a very different style of Lord of the Rings. And I know that the note said something about that. something about uh, Sauron okay. invading uh, Iridor and forcing them back to a place called mm -hmm. Nimornion, um, which apparently plays a big part in in this story because Amazon posted a map that had those names on it. And if you're a, a Lord of the Rings nut you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't, but so it's going to be a very, very different type of story because there's no wizards, there's no hobbits, and this is before the ring started, but into when they kind of came to be. Yes. There's, there are, uh, Dick, how many rings are there? Four are there. Oh, uh, I want to say, I want to, I want to say there's seven. 11. 20. There's, there's 20 rings? Seven. Yeah, there's a bunch. Really? 20. You remember ah, when they tell yes, the story, yes. the flashback of when the rings are created in the films, there's a ton of rings. And if this is when the creation of the rings are, that's going to be very interesting because all that stuff was flashback or just storytelling. So, yeah. yeah, so the very... Ooh, yeah, so they going to kill all 19? So the very opening scene, or not the opening, not the very opening scene, but the opening scene in Fellowship of the Ring when they go back to the death of Sauron, we could see that play out in real time in this series at some point. That's kind yeah. of the time that we're playing with here. Yeah, because I forget which right. which species it was, but one species got like a ton of rings. They got like forget uh, they got like seven or eight, didn't they, Keith? Like one one of the groups got. A bunch They're, of them. Oh yeah, the got it. yeah nine she, for men. Oh, was it men? Was it men? And and four and four for yeah. elves. She she corrected her herself. Oh, okay. And four and then, for elves. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. She's right. The it's, it's that three. explains why the, the fall of men happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be more grounded, like war. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, I don't know that. The, I don't know that wizards didn't exist at the time because I thought they were. Um, I no I had read up I had read up that Gandalf didn't show up until the Third Age and he was the first one to show up in Mordor, um, and so they're speculating yeah. that we're not going to see wizards or hobbits because they didn't pop up until the Third Age. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I'm just saying, I think they did exist though. So just somewhere, just somewhere else in the world. Uh, probably, I yeah, probably. Sure, but, yeah, because I think he was. Cause I think they're. I don't know if they're eternal, but I think there's some kind of weird thing where they exist outside of time or whatever. It would not matter. Oh, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Uh, oh, that's right, dwarves. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about dwarves. Um, may, maybe we could see uh, the dragon. Um, Smog. Uh, 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 smaug, oh, smaug, yeah, smaug, yeah, smaug. It'd be smaug. cool to see him, or or just any of them, because 
any more dragons essentially this could be several of them um, and it's it's, it's also worth mentioning that this the timeline the timeline in lord of the rings so the second age takes place three thousand years before the events of the hobbit trilogy which takes place 60 yeah. years before the lord of the rings trilogy and so we're talking about a major 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 time gap here where characters like Galadriel and Elrond have been around for this long, right? Kind of leading this, yeah. this group. And, and Galadriel was a very different character back then. And, um, and so Gio, I, I want to get your thoughts on this, man. Cause you know, you're just, you've been saying quiet so far on this and I don't know how big of a Lord of the Rings guy you are, but what, what are your thoughts on this overall and bringing back these characters like a, like a Galadriel or a Sauron and, and bringing them back into the fold? You know, Initially, uh, I was mixed about it, but then I thought about how um, they, the X-Men franchise handled the recastings of Professor Xavier and Magneto and how that worked out, you know, given younger versions of those characters. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's upset that um, Hugo Weaving and Kate Blanchett aren't returning, although they would be fantastic, uh, this could very well work out. Um, the idea of seeing Sauron, his rise and his, his uh, you know, reach and corrupting man, that's very exciting. Um, because for the Lord of the Rings movies, we didn't really get a lot of that, right? I mean, we got the opening scene for the Fellowship of the Ring, and then after that, he's just pretty much an eye, you know? I mean... I want to see more of, of Sauron. I think for me, that's the most uh, appealing thing of this uh, whole series, limited series. Um, but I have a question for you guys. I haven't seen the Hobbit trilogy. Do I need to watch the Hobbit trilogy in order to better understand this series? Or I don't think so. No, I personally no, don't think I, so. I, I think it's going to be very Mandalorian-esque where it's going to be you don't need to watch anything. It's going to be a fresh start for anybody who wants to get into this type of stuff. Okay, thank yeah. God. Because it's so much. <laughs> but if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings, if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings movies, though, watch them. I would no. He's yeah. Well, there's an animated uh, version of the Hobbit that came out in the seventies. I think it's on HBO now. It's actually really good. You can watch that and you can get the gist of it because it's a short book. It was only like a three hundred page story that they split into three movies. You know. Uh, or you can just read it. It's not. It's not as difficult to read as Lord of the Rings is because it's insane. Uh, that book, those all those books. But I think the the thing about hobbits. Remember, uh, uh, Gollum, uh, Smeagol was a hobbit, and he was around. I mean, he had the ring for five hundred years. Yep. You know, so there's a spoiler chance we could maybe see him. Uh, Brian, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, it's not a spoiler at all. <laughs> This is a 70, 80 year old uh, book, Brian. I'll, I'll, I'll pause this real quick. I love how Jacob left the stream and he comes back with a beer. I did well, not. We see you. Go. Wow. We see you. Wow. We see you. I did not specifically go for a beer, and I was hoping nobody saw. I tried to sneak it by. I did not we see you. specifically we see you. go for a beer, yeah. but I figured while I was out yeah. there, I might as well grab one. Just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. Crazy, crazy Tuesdays. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need my uh, uh, my Shire yeah. beer here. You know what I <laughs> the mean? Big, uh, yeah, beer from the Shire. Beer. It all hey, the beer from the I Shire looks it. delicious. Dude, they have fun, man. They party in the Shire, man. I'd, I'd love to hang out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's always funny to me. Gandalf's like, "This is the greatest weed in the in the land." <laughs> He's like <laughs> yeah, puffing yeah. a big pipe. I'm like that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, back to yeah. serious Lord of the Rings talk. Um, <laughs> I, other than the Mandalorian, I don't remember ever being so excited for a show. Like I, I've Lord of the Rings is top three franchise all time for me. And I just, I can't believe we're actually getting this honestly. Cause I don't, the Hobbits movie trilogy didn't feel, I don't know. Didn't feel as special, but this does. No. And I hope it will be. Um, but I, as far as the three characters returning, I think it makes sense because it's not like you're forcing Gandalf in or you're forcing Aragorn in. These characters are around playing prominent roles in the world. So it makes sense to have them there. I don't think they're going to have a big role. I think they're going to appear 
uh, here and there throughout the series. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, see, and I do. I agree. And maybe more. We'll get a look at Rohan. What happened to them uh, in their kingdom? Uh, what, uh, Gondor. Why? Why did they separate from uh, everyone? And you know, uh, how did Aragorn? How did that line that Aragorn belongs to? How did they get? I, I guess he's the one that kind of walked away from it. But uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting story to tell. Uh, Rachel, as he, uh, Bilbo was 111. Yes, right on the money there. But uh, her last comment there. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in that. Like uh, with those two, those two nations with Gondor and Rohan, and what happened with them. So, <laughs> so. Uh, I will. Yeah. I, I will. Cool. I will. I will say that I was when I was doing the the notes for the show tonight, and I was reading up on stuff. I had read that it's going to be a very intimate look at smaller aspects of the show or of of the uh, the world. Excuse me. Um, and so that could mean that. We could see the the effect of smaller groups of people, or or you know um, s- groups of people that we haven't met in the Lord of the Rings franchise yet, how they're affected by the larger mm. things going on, and that's where small cameos from characters like Galadriel or Elrond can come into play. I kind of think that Sauron is probably going to be a big player in the series oh, because yeah. I when I was doing up the reading up reading up stuff. I was reading that he actually can not shapeshift, but he essentially portrayed himself as someone else to get a ring or get some kind of power. And that seems like it's going to come into play. Um, I don't, I don't know how, but that just, I get the feeling from that. Um, I will also say that one of the lead characters in the, in the, the series was originally supposed to be Will Poulter but he backed out and the young man who played young Ned Stark in Game of Thrones took over that role. And that role is supposedly the main villain of the story, um, mm-hmm. which will be very interesting on who that character is. Uh, and no, no major casting has happened yet as far as like people we know in the movie world. But uh, it seems like they're putting all their effort into this, all their money into this, all of what Disney did with the Mandalorian and I have no doubt it being on Amazon that it's going to be really, really yeah. incredible because yeah. Amazon does incredible stuff. Their stuff is insanely good. And then to have a Lord of the Rings property is just, it's bonkers. Wow. Wait, Star Drew, really quick. Do they not have Prime Video in, in Canada? Because that's a shame if, if you don't get Prime Video. Wow, <laughs> really? Because, okay. Uh, man, they got a lot of good stuff on there. And if you, if, they got to find a way to get this series to yeah. as many countries as possible. And that's unfortunate if it's a good get point a, here. Yeah. Get a that's VPN. the only way I, I stay interested in this is if it's like Game of Thrones. Brian, this is so much better than Game <laughs> of Thrones. It's not even funny. Well, Keith, you haven't watched Game of Thrones, so can't say that. But <laughs> I, it's different, Brian. It's not going to be the same as Game of Thrones. It's... I mean, it's sword and sandal and magic yeah. and stuff, but it's very you different. Said there's I, no wizards. Where the hell? I love, magic I love both. I love both. Oh, there's way more magic. Way more. Is there magic in Game of Thrones? Does anybody do magic? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. But it's not not as really? much as Lord of the Rings in the in the series. I don't know about the books. I'm saying in the series, there's not as much as Lord of the Rings, but there is magic. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I've been hearing about this for like ever. I just, I, I mean, not to compare it to Game of Thrones, but I hope there's some dragons somewhere. I don't know if there's dragons in the in the Second Age, and I know we had smog in the Hobbit films. I think so. I, I just want to yeah. see some dragons. I love dragons. Do all the dragons talk? I don't know. <laughs> I think smog was his own know. thing. What? That's what a, a point! Actually, here. I don't know. What a point. Whoa, great point. What a point. Oh, is he in Game of Thrones? So Sean Bean is in the first season of Game of Thrones, but the character who plays his younger self is now in the Lord of the Rings series. Mm. That's funny. What? (laughs) He died in Game of Thrones, right? Was he killed? No. He must have been killed. I don't don't know. know. I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh -uh. No, he's Khaleesi. No, I haven't seen it in a while. I'm not sure. He didn't die. He's he's Khaleesi. So. Well, he does mocap for one of the dragons. It's weird. It's a weird story. Um, okay, Jacob, you just jumped the shark hard, dude. 
You just jumped the shark hard, bro. Like Wait, what Keith the hell doesn't that? know. Keith doesn't what, know. What he mo capped a I'm dragon? Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's literally getting kidding paid me? to do this. <laughs> hey, honestly, Keith didn't even know he was in the show. So how would Keith know? <laughs> God, that, he would that know no beer different. hit pretty fast, doesn't he? He would know no different. <laughs> he mo capped a dragon? Yeah. What? what? You didn't know that? Oh, God. <laughs> and hosting privileges were. Right and the mo capped uh, mo capped um, smout. So. Smout. <sighs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Gio, are you excited for this show, man? Are we are we getting together and watching it for sure? Uh, as long as it doesn't get in the way of uh, what HBO Max is doing next year. But oh my goodness! Yo, Here we go. Yeah, Gio, I don't like your. I don't like your. Uh, you're not excited enough about this, man. I, th- I thought you were a bigger Lord of the Rings fan than this. I thought you were. I thought you were on my side. I I am. It's just, uh, and I, I haven't seen the Hobbit movies, but they look terrible. And they are I, terrible. Don't ever I, watch them. Don't They're trash. I refuse to watch them. Trash. Watch the one with Smouth. Watch, you can watch, watch the second one because it's actually pretty – it's all right. It's not as bad as – But Evangeline and Lily uh, is the only good yeah, part you, about you don't that. need to look at it. Well, Star, Star Drew said The Hobbit won, and then two and three are meh. Just didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. Evangeline Lily, her character – and her character was made up too. Not even in the books. They made her up for the movies. And she was great. So. She's great at everything. That's interesting. Well, I like how everyone just avoids me completely when it comes to this topic. Just like you've had your chance to jump in. You're a oh no, no, I'm by all means avoid me on this. I'm just here so I don't get fined on this one. But no, there you go, Geo. (laughs) Hating on Uh, things. Yeah, aren't they? Wait, aren't they? They're Warner Brothers properties, aren't they? Aren't they on HBO Max? So I didn't see yeah, them. I well, saw the Lord of the Rings ones. The movies yeah. are the they, Hobbit they, movies they are jumped not on around. Them. They were on Netflix for a while, but Got it. they must be the on Hobbit HBO movies Max are not now. On HBO Max. Got right it. Now. Got it. But the Tolkien it's Estate the, has the rights, so they gave they sold the TV rights to Amazon because H- HBO never had the TV Tolkien. rights. So, and they might. I don't think HBO has like they own the movies that they made. Warner Bros. does, but they don't have the film official film rights anymore. Well, that think. yeah, that's that's like Lucas. Yeah, film. that's like that's exactly yeah. like Lucas film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, guys, any last thoughts on this Lord of the Rings topic? It's gonna be interesting. It's uh, it's I expect it to probably be a little bit more in the 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 money range than Mandalorian. I think it's probably gonna be higher cost than Mandalorian. So I'm interested to see what it looks like. I hope it TV doesn't suck. Show. I hope it doesn't suck. Well, and the thing that we didn't mention <laughs> is that. Uh, J.A. Bayona is directing yeah. the pilot and possibly a few episodes after. Yes. Um, and and he's he's a very renowned filmmaker. I like for, him. For especially uh, small budget films and television shows. And so that'll be very interesting uh, to see what he does because he also has a very dark take on a lot of stuff. Not not as far as like tone and, and like emotion, but his palette is a lot darker than a lot of other well, directors. Well, a monster so calls... A Monster Calls is underrated. I yes. really like that film. Yep. Yeah, and it's very dark. <laughs> oh, that's the tree, tree movie? Yeah. Yes, yes. The yeah. tree movie. Okay, I never saw that. <laughs> now we're talking and, about, uh, oh, there's uh, trees in Lord of the Rings. There are talking true. trees in Lord of the Rings. You are, that's wow, true. Brian. Whoa. Very good. Brian's, Brian's an expert. Ooh, we might see them. They're called Ents. Brian, just so you know. I knew that, Keith. Find me in trivia, bro. <laughs> you didn't. You you didn't that? know how many rings there were. So you you've already <laughs> lost. Hey, that's something I can study up on. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten it right, but I, I would have said like twelve. It's yeah. It's all the shooting was in New a high Zealand? number. There, yeah. So uh, the report from the one ring, the one ring dot net said that um, there's actually a bigger production crew in New Zealand for the show than there were for the movies. Uh, and I don't yeah. know exactly what that okay. means, um, but they're they're going. Amazon is going hard at this television show, and I think it a lot of it has to do with the, what they saw with the Mandalorian. Um, I expect it to look very much like a film on television. Yeah, 
because they if you uh, I don't know if anyone follows Lindsay Ellis, but she made a great video about the making of those movies uh, and how they nearly destroyed New Zealand <laughs> or at least their film industry you nearly they bankrupted the film industry there. It's really interesting. Hmm. So I was curious what they were doing there. So, OK. I There's would a good point there. be on Amazon than Netflix. I'd rather be on Amazon as well. I don't want it to be on Netflix. Yeah, for I this, agree because. The thing is, yeah, Netflix guess. is working on a hundred shows at one time. Amazon is is working on a lot less than that, so they can put well. More and and Netflix, in. Netflix doesn't. They don't do, yeah. they don't do properties that are pre successful. They they create their own properties that are successful, right? Like look at Stranger Things, right? Brand new property that was an absolute hit. They don't do stuff like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or you know. Um, you know, just for examples, you know, those are examples. Other or they, streaming or they services. adapt stuff that's never been adapted before. Exactly. And other yeah. streaming services pick up the stuff that's already been picked up and they can add on to stuff. Um, Disney has Star Wars. Amazon has Lord of the Rings. HBO Max has Harry Potter, which we talked about la our last show. So it Netflix, it, that's not really their go-to thing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens after this this show comes out to see what Netflix does to counter it. Well, they, the report, they've been looking for a young adult franchise, so. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see. For sure. All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for this episode of Apocalypse Now. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. That was a fun, crazy episode. We Hopefully, we can get it together by, by Friday, for sure. Uh, well, I want to thank Geo, Keith, Jake, Brian, and I am Jacob. Thank you guys for, for hopping on the show today. That was a blast. Uh, check us out on Friday. We will have our next episode of Apocalypse Now. And please find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere you find podcasts, and also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Apocalypse Movies. We will see you all in three days.